Hi and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. Now in this video we're going to be looking at five cool things you can do with an SDR receiver. Now for those that don't know what an SDR is, well SDR stands for Software Defined Radio. Uh, essentially it's a radio receiver which is controlled by your PC or your Mac using some SDR software. So today the software that we're going to be using will be SDR Sharp by AirSpy and the SDR USB dongle that we're going to be using is a new elect anyway so the first thing that we're going to be looking at will be how to listen to music we're talking about normal kind of radio stations so let's crack on let's have a look to see how this works okay so as you can see there we have a radio station playing in the background the top area of the screen is showing you the peaks so each of these peaks are different transmissions and as I move the frequency uh, selection around and select a waveform you'll see that it's a different radio station so that is how you listen to normal radio you literally just have to select the frequency and click on one of the particular peaks now what you'll notice is that the mode if you look on the top left of the screen you'll see the mode is selected WFM WFM stands for wide frequency modulation this is because it needs a wider bandwidth for listening to music or any other type of normal radio station now another cool thing that we can do with an SDR receiver is listen to airband they may be asking what is airband well it's the allocation of frequencies which aircraft transmit their audio on uh, it's normally broadcast in AM which is amplitude modulation and it's anywhere between 108 and 135 megahertz let's go ahead and have a little listen uh, to see what it sounds like so next on the list we have listen to ham radio now there's different bands and different frequencies different modes of listening to ham radio uh, using this new elec sdr receiver uh, we're able to listen to three different bands we can listen to six meters which is 50 megs we can also listen to two meters which is 144 to 148 here in the uk and also uh, 70 centimeters which is 430 to 439 the example that we're going to be looking at here will be a transmission on 70 centimeters which is going to be 439 megahertz and what we're actually going to be doing here is decoding some digital audio uh, of a mode called DMR which is fairly new to the amateur radio hobby maybe a, just a few years um, that it's been kind of around the transmission itself is digital uh, so it's a digital kind of audio and in the example that you can see here uh, I'm using an application called DSD plus to decode it so it may seem a bit complicated but it's not actually that complicated what we're doing here is taking the audio output from SDR sharp feeding that into DSD plus and DSD plus is actually converting that audio uh, the digital audio into an analog audio which we can hear and understand so let, let's just have a little listen to hear what it sounds like gd77 forum uh, asking the uh, the time question uh, and people have experimented with um, uh, converting the uh, 380 code plug into a CSV file uh, and then trying to add that CSV file uh, to the uh, uh, GD77 CSV uh, and it don't work. Uh, now if you're wondering to yourself what does this DMR digital audio sound like if you're not putting it through 
DSD to hear the converted output, this is what it sounds like. Now be careful, this is going to be very loud and very noisy, so if you're wearing headphones, just be careful. I only play a couple of seconds of this, but this is what it sounds like before it's decoded. Next on the list is Decode Digital Data. Now, the last feature that I showed you, Listen to Ham Radio, that was technically decoding digital data to audio. What this particularly means is we're gonna be decoding digital data to text. Um, so the first thing that we're gonna be looking at will be something called POCSAG, P-O-C-S-A-G, which actually stands for Post Office Code Standardization Advisory Group, otherwise known as pages. That's right, we can decode pages. So on the left-hand side of the screen here, this is the output, and we're using an application called PDW, and it's actually in the POCSAG uh, mode. It can decode other types of digital data as well. But uh, for this particular example, I'm going to be showing you the pager. Now, uh, as, as the transmission comes through the SCR receiver uh, and through the software on the right-hand side, the audio is, is pumped directly into uh, PDW. What PDW then does is decode it into text, readable text that we can... Uh, understand now the type of people that are going to be using pages maybe doctors and people like that and also there's a lot of sensors um, uh, electronic sensors which automatically send data so what I'll do now is I'll just let a uh, little bit of the audio through from what the SDR is actually receiving just so you can hear the type of tone and sounds that pages are currently making <laughs> Moving on to number five, which is track aircraft. Now it's the last one on my list, but it's definitely not the least because there's so many other things you can do with an SDR receiver, which may be covered in another video. So what's this tracking aircraft all about? Well, using the SDR receiver, you can go ahead and use two other bits of software. One's called RTL1090, and the other one is called Virtual Radar server so what essentially is happening here is the RTL 1090 software is connected directly to the SDR receiver and it's changed the frequency to 1090 megahertz which is 1.09 gigs uh, which is the frequency which aircraft transmits their mode s positioning data along with squawk codes and high altitude speed information as well. The virtual server software actually connects to the RTL 1090, it takes its data feed and it puts it into something visual, something tangible that we can look at rather than just looking at zeros and ones and loads of different hex codes. Now, as you can see here on the screen, this is the output from virtual server. It's web-based, so it's absolutely brilliant. It runs locally on your application and you can go ahead and look at the aircraft in your area. Now, the amount of aircraft that it picks up will actually depend on the type of antenna that you've got. Now, the antenna that I'm using at the moment for this demonstration is not actually tuned for 1090. So it's not gonna pick up as well as it should. Luckily, I live on a high High ground so I am still picking up some aircraft now as you can see the aircraft are moving around on the map which is pretty cool and you can actually click on each of the aircraft as well and on the right hand side it give you a whole load of information about what that aircraft is up to what it's doing the name the make even a picture of it if it's on their database obviously that information is being pulled from the internet so you do need an internet connection if you want to see all that extra information information about speed altitude heading etc the score code the type of aircraft uh, the call sign that is actually all coming down through your rtl sdr receiver through rtl 1090 and into virtual radar anyway guys i hope you enjoyed all this if you have any questions about any of these please leave it down in the comment section below and until the next video guys take care and we'll see you in the next one